everyone, my name is Jennifer Maker, and today I am teaching about Cricut Design Space for desktop and laptop with the most recent updates. This is the Cricut Kickoff Lesson 3, and we're going to go over the primary functions of the latest version of Cricut Design Space so you feel more comfortable in the software. And then we are going to create something fun together, and it's personalized, in fact. Now, in Cricut Kickoff Lesson 1, we downloaded and installed the free Cricut Design Space app from cricut.com slash setup. We created a Cricut ID, or we signed in with the one that we already had, and we did our test cut together, right? In Cricut Kickoff Lesson 2, we went over all of the tools and materials that you can use with your Cricut, and it was rather a lot. <laughs> if you need links to watch those videos before this one, which I do recommend, they are all linked below this video. Today, we're going to dive into Cricut Design Space itself and see how it all works. Now, before we get too far, I want to remind you about my free and updated Cricut Kickoff Printable Handbook that goes along with these lessons. You can download it right now at cricutkickoff.com. Just register for the class and you will get the handbook. I'll be referring to it as we go along during today's lessons. Our instructions for our project are in here, and I also have some super cool design space maps in here. So please pull up a chair here in my studio and let's get started. So first, let's talk about what is Cricut Design Space. So. Cricut Design Space is the free companion app to your Cricut cutting machine. Design Space, or DS as some people will call it, lets you design and cut with your Cricut. You can create projects from scratch, use one of Cricut's images, or upload images. And again, this is free software. So even if you don't currently have a Cricut cutting machine, you can download this software free and play around with it first. Many people do that, and I recommend it. So let's go ahead and go into the Cricut Design Space app on my Mac so you can see what it looks like. So Design Space for Desktop looks the same on Mac and Windows. Let me bring this up here. Here it is. It looks the same on Mac and Windows. Um, remember, uh, Windows needs to have Windows 10 or later and at least 4 gigabytes of RAM or more and at least 2 gigabytes of free disk space on the Mac. You need to be running OS 11 or later and have at least 4 gigabytes of RAM and 2 gigabytes of free disk space. If you find Cricut Design Space seems really slow, the likely culprit is your computer's CPU memory or available hard drive space. Cricut Design Space is very fast for me and I have virtually no problems with it ever. Okay, so let's begin by taking a look at what we've got here. So this is the home screen and this is the first thing you see when you open it up and I'm going to give you a tour of the home screen and then we're going to go into where we actually do our designing which is called the canvas and I'll give you a tour there as well. So um, starting in the upper uh, left corner, we have our hamburger menu, this thing with three lines right here. This is where you'll find a lot of settings, the ability to switch things around and stuff. Uh, your profiles at the top here, if you care, this is my profile here. That's my profile. Look, I'm almost at 10,000 followers. That's kind of uh, kind of awesome. We've had many people follow today. You're welcome to follow me if you want to. Uh, if you're following, you'll be notified when I put new projects up. Uh, okay, so anyways, <laughs> um, and then there's a learning plan. The learning plan, plan is a new feature. It is just for those who have the Maker 3 and Explorer 3, but if you have one of those machines, you might enjoy their, their guided tutorials on how to use different features. This, the home screen, that's where we're at right now, right? This is the home. This is what the page that you open up to when you first get into Cricut Design Space. And then the canvas, which we'll go into in a little bit, so I'll skip that one for now. And then down here, these are all like our setting things. New product setup is what we did in lesson one. If you click this, you get the option to set up a new machine or a heat press, right? So that's all in there. We close that. And then back in our hamburger menu, we have the ability to manage custom materials. And I'm actually, um, well, I'll wait. So managing custom materials is a cool thing. If you click on this, we can select one of our crickets. So I have quite a few on my network here. And then we can actually edit material settings and create new material settings, right? So I, I've explained this in several different tutorials I have, because sometimes I like just to make new material settings. But if ever you want to tweak anything, I know change 
the pressure or the number of times it cuts or what tool it uses, this is where you would go. And you are, you can access this for any machine, right? It is specific to the machine though. And then the ability to update your firmware. That's always useful if you want to do that. <laughs> um, account details. This is your account. It takes you over to Cricut.com. Linking cartridges. Cartridges are older um, technology. I've never had a cartridge before, but if you do, this gives you information about it. Cricut Access is uh, the subscription program. I'll go ahead and click on that and tell you about it. So Cricut Access is optional and it's the subscription program that is like paired with Cricut Design Space. So it allows unlimited use of over 260,000 of Cricut's graphics, um, ready to cut projects, fonts, Subscribers get discounts on Cricut.com purchases, a priority member line to contact, special offers just for access subscribers, all that good stuff. It is 100% optional, right? And it has these cool features, all of which you can see here. This is cool, right? A lot of people, however, confuse Cricut Access with Cricut Design Space, but they're not the same. Cricut Design Space is the free software that you use to create or upload designs and cut them on your Cricut. All Cricut Explorer family, Maker, and Joy users need to download and use the free Cricut Design Space software, but they do not need to pay for Cricut Access unless they want to, okay? This is optional. You do get a 30-day trial, right? And you may remember that in lesson one, I had you skip it until lesson three when we could talk about it. So this is, if you're ready to start creating, this is the right time to start your free trial. I have a subscription already, so my screen will look different than yours. Many people will ask me if they think Cricut Access is worth it, and I think it is if you will use it. Um, so it's got a lot of awesome and cool benefits, but if you're not going to be using your Cricut or you're not using the images and fonts, then it's not a good use of your money. I like it because mostly because of the fonts. I will, like It has writing fonts. It's really the only place that you can get true writing fonts um, is in Cricut Access, right? So a Cricut Access, if you're, if you're buying any images or fonts, the subscription does pay for itself very quickly, but it has to be if it's the right fit for you. So this is a great time to activate your trial, see what you think about it. Um, if you want more information about Cricut Access, I have a whole Q&A about it on my blog. It's at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Access. And just so that everybody knows, one of the uh, perks is that you are able to buy things like mystery boxes with Cricut cuties. <laughs> I get that question all the time. So head on over to Cricut or jennifermaker.com slash Cricut dash access to see a list of all the perks and a bunch of other answers to questions I get. Now, because I have Cricut Access, that means I have access to a lot of images and fonts that you may or may not. You can tell if something has uh, is included, I'm gonna close this, by this icon, this little green flag and the letter A in the top left corner. This identifies an item as one that's included with a Cricut Access subscription. So if you have Cricut Access, Instead of showing a price, it will just show that it's available, right? Like you can see here, right? All of these things, they are using something from Cricut Access. All right, so as we're working along today, I will mention that just so that you're not confused because you might see something might appear free for me, but it's not free for you. So that's Cricut Access. Um, okay, so, and then your settings. Let me click on settings. So settings is awesome because there's a lot of little things that may not make sense right now, but as you use design space, it'll make more sense. Obviously your language. Uh, saving for offline, I recommend you keep it on cloud and computer, um, not just cloud only. And your, app, your application experience, I am on the live version of Cricut Design Space right now, but if you ever wanna try out new features, you can switch to the beta version. Just keep in mind it's a beta, you know, so things can and do go wrong. Um, and you can switch back and forth. Anyone can do this, not just me. <laughs> um, anyone can switch back and forth. It's, it's a public beta, right? So there can be cool features. I don't know of anything right now, but there's usually something. Um, and then that's under general. And then under canvas, you can choose what kind of grid you want. You can toggle that on the canvas too. I'll show you that. And you can choose your units. Under load type, these are your defaults. 
right? So this might not make sense now, but if you have multiple crickets or you get a have an older cricket and you get a new one, you come in, you want to come in here and switch it. So if, like, for example, I can switch it to any of these crickets that I have, right? So I can switch it right now to my Cricut Maker 3. And I can indicate how I want the default load type to be. So I'm not always changing it, right? And then notifications, I have them all currently turned on, but you can choose to turn them all off or turn some on and some off. It's completely up to you. If you don't care about the social aspects of Cricut Design Space, you can turn everything off. Um, and let me show you right here. This is where your notifications show up. This little bell with the little red number on it. So um, if I click on this, I will see that Victoria, Natalie, Samantha, Sandra, and Maeve just followed me. Thanks guys. <laughs> so I will be notified when someone is following me, which is cool. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. Um, so you don't, if, if you don't care, you don't need to click that. You don't need to be showing that. All right. So that's your hamburger menu. And of course we're on the home screen over here on the right upper right corner of your home screen. You have the learning plan. Again, the learning plan is self guided tutorials for the explore three and maker three. They're pretty cool. You can check them out if you have those machines. This is the notification menu right here. Ruth and JC and Amanda and Jenny just followed me. You guys are awesome. Thank you. All right. <laughs> And then uh, my stuff is where you'll find your saved projects. So if I click on that right now, it goes into all of my saved projects, all, all sorts of things in here. And this is actually goes for me, it goes all the way back to 2017. Everything that I've ever made is here. And there's different, they recently up to, you know, you can filter, you can search all this good stuff, right? This is all of my projects, but you know, bookmark projects. For example, this is one of my projects that you can make for free that I designed here. There's nothing to upload for this one. This is the mug setup design setup that I, of course I bookmarked because it was awesome. I don't know if there's anything under ready to make. Oh, I guess there is. There's some stuff in there. So um, this is where you'll find your projects that you've saved. Anything you save will show up here. And then this menu right here is how you switch between your crickets. Um, so I have it currently set to joy. I'll, I think I'll just keep it there for now, but I can anytime switch it to another machine just like this. So you'll want to, if you have multiple machines, you want to be sure that you are selecting the right one. And then a new project lets you start a brand new project on your canvas. And let's go back to home before I do that to see if there's anything else that I want to show you. Yes, so this bar right here is a place where you can search. You can search images, projects, and profiles. So people, right? So you can search for things here. There's handy little tabs here. Cricut is always keeping this up to date. They've recently added the ability to put some of their videos right into Cricut Design Space. So right here, you'll see them. And um, all sorts of cool stuff. This page will just keep scrolling. There's contributing artists and this is all their stuff. So it's really awesome. This is a great place to explore and get a feel for what you can make with Cricut if you're new to it. All right, I think I've covered um, almost all the new stuff. So I think we're ready to go to the canvas. So you can go to the canvas in two ways. You can click new project up here in the upper right corner or you can go over here and go to canvas, right? Either way right? If you already have a project on your canvas and you're just like bopping about, you want to choose canvas so that you go back to it and don't replace it. If you do want to replace it, then you would just do a new project and it will ask you if it's okay to replace it, of course. So here we are on the canvas, a blank canvas ready for us to create something awesome. There's a lot of buttons and menus here and I know it might seem overwhelming, but Honestly, Cricut Design Space is one of the most user-friendly um, so software suites, whatever we call this, pieces of software, whatever, that I've ever used. And I have used a lot. I have been, um, I, I, I think I, most people know I've been writing books for a long time. So before Jennifer Maker, I wrote a lot of books. I mostly wrote computer books. So I have used a lot of software. Um, I wrote some of the, I wrote whatever, it's not important when I wrote, but I have used a lot of software. I've been using a Mac since 1987 or 88, yeah, whatever, a very long time now. 
consistently this whole time too. All right, so let me give you a tour of the canvas so you know where to find things. And I also want to remind everybody that in the Cricut Kickoff Handbook, I have created a map. So if you are new to Cricut Design Space or just would find it helpful, here is a map. I made this just a couple days ago, so it's all up to date right now. And it shows you where everything is located. Things are color coded. There's little cheats down here to help you find things. This is a great thing to print out and keep next to you as you're learning Cricut Design Space because these little gray icons sometimes are hard to read. And sometimes if you know you're going to use something, get out your highlighter or your pen, circle it, star it, whatever, make notes all over this, okay? All right, so here we are. All right, so we still have our hamburger menu always available to us. And then along the left side, we have an array of icons. New, we'll start a new project. Regardless of what's on your canvas, it will ask you if you wanna replace it. Templates are a feature that's specific to desktop. It'll allow you to put a template on your screen like a baseball shirt. And then you can use that. You can even like resize it and everything. You can change its color to help you visualize what something looks like. These won't cut out or print out, but they can be helpful if you're trying to get the placement of things right and the, the size and you know all that, all that good stuff. And at any time you can hide it. I'm just gonna go ahead and hide that one. All right, projects are ready to make projects from Cricut. They're constantly changing. I see we have a lot of um, New Year cards. Awesome, so lots of cards in here. Lots and lots of cards. Oh, those are adorable. <laughs> um, holiday prep, so just all sorts of things. Um, and if you click on them, they'll show you details about them, what materials you need to use. They're like mini tutorials. There's not usually any kind of video or anything, but it still can be a nice place to begin if you want, especially if you're new, right? So that, and then you can just click on customize and it will add to your canvas. Note that these are Cricut Access images, right? So they're using a, an image that's in Cricut Access and a font, okay? So I'll close that. Shapes, shapes are, I use these all the time. In the top here, we have free shapes. I'm gonna go ahead and put a heart on my canvas. You just click it and you can resize it to, to make it big. These little handles on the sides here, those are our resize handles and we can use them to make things bigger or smaller. I'm just clicking and holding and dragging to do this. And uh, so shapes we use to design things. Um, we use them for all sorts of things. You, you, will get the, you will get the idea as you do them. But so there, I want you to note that there are free ones. These are free for everybody, no matter you know, what your status is. If you have Cricut access, there are additional shapes down here. Honestly, even though I'm a Cricut Access subscriber, I limit myself to using these because this is all I need, right? That's it, that's all I need. Plus, if I ever choose not to be a Cricut Access subscriber, I won't have a problem making my projects, right? Because you have access to things while you're a subscriber. If you let your subscription lapse, then you will be asked, if you go to go to cut it again, you'll be asked if you, you'll be, prompted to buy it, right? Which may or may not be fine, it just depends, right? So I just stick to the free ones because I use shapes a lot. And then below that we have images. And this is where all of those um, hundreds of thousands of images are located. And it starts usually with this. You can go very deep into it. You can search for, let's search for heart. So I'm gonna type in heart right here and press return on my keyboard and um, these are my hearts, so it's also searching my own images that I've uploaded, and then it's searching other images, right? And at any time, I can filter these results. So over on the side here, we have filters. I can click on free, and this shows me all the free hearts that are available, which is really quite a few. There's a lot of free images, a lot of free images. Free images do change. They will be free for a while, and then not be free. Some stay free, but you know, it's not like you ever really know. It's kind of random. <laughs> there are some that have been free for years though, but they're always putting some, you know, in so that you can try them out. And then you can look at just your stuff that you've uploaded. So here's all the hearts I've ever uploaded. I like hearts. 
There's our heart explosion box. So lots and lots of things like that. And you can also search by the operation type, cut only, draw only, print and cut. Pretty much anything you can think of is here for you to search for. Um, but if you, one thing I want to point out is that if uh, you're, you know, you're stuck and you can't find something, especially an image set. So an image set is um, a collection of images that all go together. A lot of people struggle with where to find them and they're right here on this regular, the image, the first image page you see. If you click on that, it'll show you oh, there's over 6,000 image sets. So this can be a good way to find related images too, right? So everything will be in here and you can, of course, um, just show ones that you've purchased, right? Which is a whole bunch of things I have here. All right, so that's images. Let's go back to um, our canvas. I'm gonna go back to here and click on, I don't know, there we go, I'll just do that. That'll take us back, okay. And then next we have text. And text is really pretty simple. We click on text. And once we do that, we get this. And I'm going to zoom in on this so you can see it. Let me try doing it. I'm going to try to get a little closer. <laughs> That's a lot closer, huh? <laughs> Maybe we don't need to be quite that close. I'll back out a little bit. By the way, just there, I used a keyboard shortcut. So on my keyboard, to get to do this, sorry, my keyboard's dirty. <laughs> I use it a lot. So it was like, oh yeah, you can't see it right now. So it was like, um, let's see here. Do I have a split screen? I don't think I do. So here is what it looked like, right? It was tiny. And then you saw me really quick go and make it big. So I used the keyboard shortcut, um, Command 2 on the Mac or Control 2 on the Windows computer. And I'm gonna do it again right now. And you'll see it, it zooms right to it. So it's a little, it's a little thing. I have a little uh, a cheat sheet about that if you are interested in learning about keyboard shortcuts. All right, so here is text. We're gonna make it a little smaller. So when it first shows up on your screen, it tends to look like this, right? When you first click text, you get this big text and it has the word text in it. And I think it confuses some people because I often hear, how do I get rid of text? So the way you get rid of this is to put your text in, right? It's basically ready to go for you to insert, to start typing. So I am just going to type Jennifer, right? It so it'll just replace that text as you start typing. If you went off and did something else and came back and you're like, okay, now I'm ready, but you're typing and nothing's happening. I'm typing, nothing's happening. You want to double click on this text here, like this, just double click with your mouse, and then you can type new text, okay? You can also just click once on the text and it'll insert your cursor wherever you need it to go, okay? So really easy, um, and then you can just delete things, right? Just say make, whatever, right? So that's all we do with, that's all we have to do with text. Now there is more that we can do with text. We can change the font, we can change the size, letter spacing, um, line spacing, all that. When we get to our project, I'll show you more about those, okay? But this is the basic text function. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that though. And I'm just gonna just press delete on my keyboard. All right. Um, phrases is a sub search of images and it's just a way for you to find all of the phrase um, imagery in Cricut Access, right? So, you know, if you like to just look for phrases, you can do that here and it's got the languages here. So if you, if you just want to design your own things and but use, you know, cute calligraphic things, there's all sorts of options in there. Editable images is a newer feature and it lets you um, it's got pre things that are pre-designed, but you can edit the name or the number or whatever to be specific to you, right? So for example, it says, happy birthday, Adriana, but we could edit it to say whatever name you want, right? Same here. Here's a name. So these last names, all of these things can be edited to fit whatever project you want to make. All right. The upload button is right here. We're gonna talk about that when we get to our project, so we'll just pass that by for now. And then the monogram 
The Monogram Maker is, is a feature just for Cricut Access subscribers. It's fairly new and it's just a way to make monograms easier. It's pretty cool. You can choose um, frames and you can choose, you, know, you can put in the own, your, whatever initials you want. You can either start with the classics, right? Like this is the classic monogram or you can go by themes right? Botanical, decorative, occasions like that. So it's um, a fun way. So if you're a Cricut Access subscriber, you might enjoy playing with Monogram Maker. Okay, so let's click out of that. So by the way, if a feature is specific to Cricut Access, I'll be sure to let you know. So far, other than our images, that's the only feature that is specific to uh, Cricut Access subscribers. There are there is a couple others, but I'll let you know as we go through. Okay, so across the top here, let's go find our heart. This is our layers panel over here. I'm gonna click on it, and that's gonna um, allow me to select it. It's very big. So let's, let's make that a little smaller so we can see it. <laughs> I think my heart's very big. Okay, there it is. Uh, so, um, Across the top of our screen, we have lots of other options. These are our actions for our, sorry, these are our, the way that we edit. So I think of this as the, an edit menu across the top. So starting on the far left, we have undo and redo, right? So if I wanna undo, um, I get my text back. If I redo, it goes away. Um, undo and redo are both unlimited during one session. So you can undo to your heart's content as many times as you need to, same for redo. But once you close a project or restart Cricut Design Space, it will like reset and you won't be able to open up a project and then undo it, right? So it's specific to your session. And next to that, we have the operation menu. So by default, most uh, anything you put onto your canvas will by default be a basic cut. As you can see, this heart is a basic cut, right? So, but, and I have my Explore selected. Let's change it to a Cricut Maker 3. If we go to it, op, op, Operation, we actually see all the things that we can do. So we can do basic cut, wavy cut, perforate, and then we can draw with a pen, we can foil, we can score, we can deboss, and we can engrave and we can do print and cut, and we can do guide. It's a lot of things. What's in this menu does depend on what Cricut you have. So at the top, we've got Maker 3, which has all of the functions. If we switch this to Explore 3, we get fewer functions. So you'll see some things are missing. We can't engrave or deboss, stuff like that. And then if we switch to Joy right here, you will see that you have even less. You have just the four, these four basic things, cut, so basic cut, pen, foil, and guide, right? So these are the basics and then they go up from there. So um, basic cut is the, our basic primary function of our crickets, it does the cut, all of the crickets cut. Um, pen is when we use our pen to draw it, um, usually on a piece of cardstock, you know, but it depends. You can use writable vinyl, right? Uh, foil, all of the crickets can foil too. So they can all cut, they can all draw, and they can all foil. So foil is where we use the foil transfer tool to apply foil, usually to cardstock, but you can use faux leather too. And then a guide, let me use this one. A guide actually changes it to this like pink lined outline, whatever you have selected, and it allows you, it's good for designing things. So you know what the shape of something is if you're trying to do something. It's, it's useful. Right, so you can make a guide out of anything, text, shapes, whatever it is. So you can just change it to guide. That's kind of cool. Uh, let's change it back to basic cut though. And then right to the right of the operation menu is the color picker. And this is where we change colors of layers. So make sure your uh, layer, your item, your thing <laughs> is selected on your canvas, right? So it has this box around it. This box is how we know something is selected. You can also tell over in the layers panel because it'll turn um, usually this light green color, right? So when I click off, the box goes away, right? It's no longer there and it's not selected anymore. But as soon as I click on it, that we get that bounding box, that's what we call that. And then we can see it's highlighted, okay? So we can go change the color. By the way, this is very big. I just realized how big I made this heart. 
let's bring that down back to size and then we can zoom in on it more. All right, so there we go. I'm using my mouse right now to like move around the screen. Okay. Um, you can use, there's so many ways you can move with your, um, you can move just by dragging things around. You can use your mouse and you can use your keyboard to do all sorts of things. All right, so the color picker right here. If I click on this with something selected, I can change its color. So I can change this heart from the default of um, dark gray, that's the default color, to black, uh, red, right? Or any of these colors, or even more colors if I want. So I can click on advanced and I can choose any color I want from down here, as well as anything in the spectrum also. You can even type in a hex color right here if you want to match something. But I usually just use these. These are good enough. Because after all, this is just our visual representation on the screen. Your Cricut doesn't really know what color material you're putting in. <laughs> um, so here is a red heart. Okay, so it's selected, right? Um, and I'm just clicking on it to select it. You can always deselect it if you need to. If you're having a problem, you can click here and it'll deselect. And this will select all. So if you have a lot of things on your screen, you can select everything. It's good for resizing and stuff like that. The edit menu here, the little pencil icon, um, lets you do things like copy, paste, cut, duplicate, and delete, right? Those are all pretty basic things. I'm not gonna explain those. Um, but there is one thing I think is really cool that I want you to know about right now. So if I were, I can copy this heart. So let's go ahead and copy it. And obviously I can go ahead and paste it in. But did you know that on Cricut Design Space for desktop, you can open up more than one window at a time. So if you come up here to it'll look a little different on Windows, but it also works on Windows. Um, look for your file menu and choose new window. And it gives you a brand new window. It doesn't hurt the one that you had. See, it's all there, it's all intact. And then I can go start a new project and I can go paste in whatever I had copied, right? So um, this is how I do multiple projects at one time on multiple machines, which at the, if all goes well, I will demonstrate at the end of today's lesson. So that's just a little thing. That's why one of the reasons why it's so useful to be able to copy because you can copy everything over, right? It's pretty cool. And you just switch back and forth between these windows. All right, so then we also have an align menu, which is currently grayed out. That means not available. But if I duplicate this heart, I'll go to the edit menu and choose duplicate. Now I have two hearts, right? And I select both. And I can select both in a couple different ways. One is by just sort of dragging a box over them like I'm doing right here. Or I can go over here to the layers panel. I'll deselect them. I can hold down the shift key on my keyboard to select them both like this, or I can come up here and say select all. So different ways. Sometimes one way will work better than another for certain designs that are tricky or whatever. So I have them both selected and now the align menu is showing up. So align is to, you know, it's probably pretty self-explanatory, but I can align everything to the left or let's make one of these smaller so we can tell. And I'll move it like this. All right, so we can align it left. We can align it um, center vertically, right? We can center it exactly, all that good stuff, right? So you can even distribute. If you had um, more than two items, you can distribute them vertically or horizontally. Okay, so let's move this over here. And then you can arrange things. So right now you'll notice that this heart is over this bigger heart. A small heart is over the big heart. In fact, let's go ahead and change the color of this one. So we have, um, there we go. We have a yellow and a, and a red. So the yellow heart is, let me move these over a little bit. So my, there we go. The yellow heart is on top of, or um, on a higher layer than the red heart. So there's two ways we can change that. We can just go to the arrange menu and we can say send backward or send to back right? Or we can just click and drag them right in our layers panel here to move to rearrange them. And that's useful. Sometimes you'll do something. Usually when you do an action, it'll change, it'll bring it to the top layer and you'll want to send it to the back again when you're done. Okay. Um, you can flip things, right? Um, I did a, did I do a range? Yes. <laughs> you can flip things. So like flip vertical, 
right? So, and you can do an offset. An offset is where the, it puts an outline either around your layer or inside of it. So an offset or an inset. So if I click on this, you'll see the outline of it show up right here. So I can change how much offset there is and how uh, little, right? So you can and change it, you can change your corners too. So there's a sharp corner down there instead of a curved corner if you want to. And then when you do that, it creates a new layer. So now I have three layers, right? I have this a black layer, the red layer, and then the original yellow layer, which is pretty cool. All right, um, and then we can resize from up here as well. So yes, we can resize from any corner of our object on our canvas, but we can also resize here for more precise control. So I can change this to be nine inches right here if I want, just by typing in nine and then pressing return. Um, also note this icon at the top here, this is the lock proportions or, you know, um, so if I, I have, everything is locked right now, by default it's locked. If I unlock it and then I resize it, I can get this effect, right? So sometimes we want that, most of the time we don't want that. So by default it's locked. Let's go back. And then, so you always want to keep an eye and make sure it is locked if you don't want it changing proportions on you. In my tutorials, I usually call this out because that can trip all of us up. <laughs> you can also rotate from up here. Um, so I can type in, you know, uh, 90 degrees and it will rotate 90 degrees. Or I'm going to use a keyboard shortcut right now to undo. That is Command Z or Control Z. Uh, but you can also rotate from any corner too. Right? So not only can you resize from any corner, you can rotate. You just take your cursor out a little further. So here is resize and here is rotate. Oops, right there. See how the cursor changes to the, it's curved and it's got double arrows. And now I can rotate to my heart's content, right? Like that. So you can do that. You can do the resizing and rotating from any corner. So I'm going to undo all that. All right. And you can change the position on the canvas. Um, that can be useful if you're trying to get it super precise. I don't usually use that too often, but you never know what you might need it for. All right, so that's everything across the top, um, except text, we'll get to that later. And then over here on the right side is your layers panel. Your layers panel is important. It's always visible when you're working on your canvas, which I love. Right, so it shows all of our, every layer that we have and its status, right? So right now I've got little um, warning signs. Do you see these little red things next to them? That's telling me that there's an issue. And without even looking at it, I know what it is because I have my joy selected, right? And the joy, as a reminder for anyone, here's the joy. The joy uses a very small mat right? And this is only four and a half inches wide. So anything wider than four and a half inches is not going to fit, right? So I know that these are too big. So if I were to select everything and resize it smaller, those should go away. Almost. There we go. So they all went away. So that's what's going on. But hey, that's okay. <laughs> While we're designing, we can always, you know, we can resize later. So you may see the little thing that you can click on it. You don't have to just know. You can click on it. It'll tell you. Image too large. <laughs> um, so if ever you see the little warning, click on it so that you know what's going on. Um, but we won't worry about it for now. And we can also just change it to Maker 3 and it'll go away too. All right. Um, and then I want you to also note, so there's like a little icon preview of your layer to help you identify it. Yellow heart, black heart, red heart right? And then these, um, each of these layers can be renamed, right? So if I double click on this, I can say, I don't know, hello heart, I guess, right? So you just double click on it and then you can type it in. This is an offset. This is the, the um, automatic name it gave it, but I'm going to say black heart, whatever. You don't have to rename things, but it can be useful if you're trying to identify something. You've got a lot of layers that are similar or something when you're working with them. And then um, there is a, I want you to note the little eye icon, icon. As, um, as I hover over each layer here, it shows up. And this is how we can hide and show things on our canvas. Um, if things are hidden, they won't cut or 
or do whatever, right? If, but if they're visible, they will. So if I wanted to say, just cut out the red and yellow heart, I can click the eye icon next to the black heart and it will hide on my canvas, but not be deleted at any time I can bring it back, right? Now there's um, some very faint icons up here. I don't want you to miss them. If I have more than one thing selected, they, they'll show up for us. Here we go. So right here is the group icon. Usually I, it'll, when you, there we go. So when you hover over it, it'll tell you what it is. So well, with this icon, we can group and we can ungroup, right? So you just click it again if you want to ungroup it. You can also duplicate from here. It's, a, you know, you can also do it over in your edit menu, but you can do it here too. So you can duplicate and then we get a duplicate set of what we, oh, what we had selected at the time we click duplicate. And uh, one more thing and that's delete. So we can delete here or we can just press delete on our keyboards either way. And then color sync is um, so that you can make sure that all of your similar colors are actually the same color. Let me give you an example. So let's say, let's uh, duplicate this heart and I'm just gonna come up to the edit menu and say duplicate. So I have this heart and uh, let's change it to no blue and then later on i'm like oh wait i want this to be yellow right okay and then i'm like oh like sometimes you break you get colors in weird ways and for usually it's easier so by the way these colors up here these are the ones you're actively using so i always just go give it the same color but like you never know maybe you're bringing in things from other projects right you're copying and pasting there's stuff everywhere all sorts of different colors this happens right so you just end up with another yellow. It looks pretty similar. I would say that's it's close. I'm sure we can get closer. That's pretty close. Uh, trying to get it close. That's close, right? It looks, they both look like they're yellow. But notice over in, let me move this here. Notice over here in the color sync panel, these are not the same yellow. And so when you go to cut them, it'll ask you to put in two different yellow mats. And it's like, why, what? So you can sync your colors and all you do is you decide which one you want to keep it and you can click and drag it. So now they're ex both exactly the same yellow color. All right. So then at the bottom, sorry, I had to move something off screen. You couldn't see that. Oh my goodness. I have so many things going on here. Let's get rid of this heart. I want to show you something else too while I'm thinking about it. There is a secret menu um, that you can access by, I'll have to show you my mouse to show it to you. See if I can get my mouse up here. One moment. I don't know if I can. It's kind of, it doesn't have a very long cord. Oh, here we go. Okay. Uh, so here's my mouse. So if you right click on your canvas or on your layers panel, it'll bring up a secret menu. It's not really secret. I always say that. It's like it's secret because a lot of people don't know about it. So normally when we're clicking, we're clicking with that. Uh, well, we're left clicking with this mouse. But if you right click, you will get an, a menu. So let me show you. Bring my mouse back around here. Okay. So if I right click, I'm going to right click right now. I get this awesome menu, right? So this has a lot of uh, functions in it. Let's select something so we, it actually shows us something. So from this menu, I can group, cut, copy, delete, duplicate, all, all the things, a bunch of things I haven't even told you about. So I tend to use this a lot. So like I click on this and then I do delete, right? So um, I have tutorials on these things, by the way. I know this, I'm giving you a lot of information, but um, it's awesome information. <laughs> I want you to, even if you don't absorb it all right now, remember you can always replay this video. Okay. So let's select some more things. And I know I was going to show you something, but I kind of forgot what it was. Um, hang on a second. Oh, I know I'm in color sync. <laughs> Something's missing. Let's go back to our layers panel. There we go. All right, so down at the bottom of our layers panel, we have, this is the template that we were working with, just so you know. So any templates will show up at the bottom of the layers panel. And then we have more um, action items, right? So we have across the bottom, slice, combine, attach, 
flatten and contour, right? So slice is just two layers. So let's move one of these out of the way. And if I select two layers, I can slice. So slice will slice one shape out of another. So if I click slice right now, I'll end up with um, a black outline because it was the inset and then a bunch of extra stuff. So I get these three and it'll show up over here as slice results. So that's slice. So let's undo all of that. Right, so now we're back with our three hearts. Um, combine is a new feature. So combine lets us, um, it, it, let's actually let's move this over here a little bit here. So combine will let us weld. So this is where weld used to be and I'll click on it and you'll see weld is still here at the top. So welding, for those who don't know, will um, permanently glue two or more layers together. You can select as many layers as you want. And if I do that right now, I will get a solid heart, right? There's no, you can see in the layers panel, it's now just one thing. It's not separate, right? But the new combine features, let's undo that. Um, if I use one of the other combine features, Unite, if I use Unite, and I'll do it right now, it looks like it did the same thing, but I want you to note that over here, I still have two distinct layers, right? So, and I can actually manipulate them separate. So it's like a non-permanent weld. It's pretty awesome, right? So, um, and you can save it like this. It'll cut just however you move it. So it's like weld, it behaves like weld, but it's not permanent. And so even after you've closed and saved your file and open it up, you can, see it, you can do it again, right? You can change it again. It's pretty awesome. And uh, same thing for the other features. So I'm going to undo that. Get back to where we were. So um, there's other things in here. I have a whole video about these that goes into more detail, but subtract will subtract one shape, one layer from another. So it's like slice, but not permanent. So I'm going to go ahead and do it. So there it is. So we just got this, you know, it sliced out the middle essentially and left us with the outline. Um, so I recommend you watch that video if this, if the combined menu seems confusing to you because it's pretty awesome because, you know, I, we get to retain all of these layers and it's not permanent. So when you save your file and you come back in a year and you want to put in someone else's name or something, if you've used the combined features instead of slice and weld, you'll be able to change it easier. Okay, that's, that's the easiest, that's the best benefit I can, I can share about it is that, because you'll, you'll have forgotten where you got that thing from. By the way, if you ever do forget, there's another trick for you under, um, if you right click on one of your layer items in your layer panel, I'm gonna do it, see if it, this one will show it. Let's pick a different one. It's, it's below the screen. There we go. Um, so I right clicked on that with my mouse and it shows us, you know, the same, similar thing. We can rename it from here too. We don't have to just double click it. Um, you can bring it to front and forward here, but look down at the bottom where it says image info. So we can see which heart we used and where it came from. You know, it came from the shapes menu. <laughs> but if it's like, it'll show you the font that you used. It'll show you the original image, all sorts of stuff. So if you've forgotten what font it is or you've forgotten what, um, you know, your images, it actually shows you right here. If you right click in the layers panel on your layer. So that's a really important tip to have. All right. And then attach is important. We're going to, I'm going to show you that in our project, I think, because we are going to attach something, but attach is essentially, it is, um, it, it is the best way to describe it is um, it's not, it's like gluing something together or paper clipping something together. So when I group things, I can group these two things here with the group thing and they'll stay together. When I select them there, oops, I think I just, um, well, let's go find that again. There we go. Um, didn't I group these two things together? Let's try that again. Oh, they were grouped. Okay. So when I click on them on the canvas, they're together, right? They're a unit, um, but they won't cut out together, right? So when I, if I were to go to cut this right now, I'd have two separate things. Um, for But when you attach things together, they will cut together. So if I click attach, 
they will change the same color because they're cutting together because they're going to be the same on the same mat, right? Same material. So they change to the same color and then they will cut in that exact relationship to one another on your mat. Um, so attach is very important for keeping things together when you go to cut or draw or foil or whatever. And flatten is used for print and cut. So this isn't much of a thing to flatten. Let's detach this and uh, let's ungroup it. And let's <laughs> change this color to something else. Let's give it a blue color. Let's say I like this design. It was a logo for something and I want to print it, right? Um, and not cut it out in different shapes. So I can select both of these or however many things are in my design and I can click flatten. You'll notice that the black outline goes away um, as, as a visual reminder to us that this is for printing. So it will print this. Um, assuming we have a printer, your Cricut doesn't print, right? So you have to use your inkjet or laser printer. So you print this and then you can put it into your Cricut and it will cut out a lot around the edges. So it will cut out all around the edges here and here. So wherever there's you see the canvas underneath, that's where it will cut. So if, for example, you didn't want it to cut out here, right? You wanted it to be solid there. You could do that by going to shapes, choosing a heart, making your heart big enough to fill that space there like this, changing the color to white, sending it to the back, arrange, send to back, and then selecting everything and doing flatten. You'll notice that now it's white. It's not the color of the canvas. So that's how you would do that. A lot of people ask me that question too. So, and then contour is um, a way to modify designs. So let's go grab an image from the image library, um, Cricut's library here. That's a good one. A nice, simple, a nice, simple one. Let's go back to all of our, let's go look at all the images that we have here. Um, okay. How about this one? No. How about, <laughs> uh, there's so many I get, okay, let's do this one. Let's say we wanted a paw, but we didn't want the heart in the middle. This is a good one. So let's add this to the canvas. No, we added both of them. Let's get rid of that one. All right. So here is the paw and then let me zoom in a bit here so you can see it better. I don't want it to be too small. There. All right. So let's say we really like this paw, but we didn't want the heart. So we could use contour to get rid of the heart. So you just select your layer and you click on contour and then you can actually click on anything you don't want. So I can click on the heart here and then I close it and the heart is gone. So contour is great for, you know, little tweaks of things that you want to change about a design. And those are the major functions other than upload and some extra text things that I'm going to show you. So I think that we are ready to do a project. Okay. I know that was a lot of stuff. I get that. Um, but I'm trying to get as much into our lesson as we can. So remember, you can replay this if you're having, you're like, whoa, your head is blown. I get that. Okay. So let's delete all of this stuff that we were messing with. So I'm just going to delete this and delete this. So we have a, there we go. Okay, so I have a project for you. Um, to find it, you want to go to um, a web browser and then go to jennifermaker.com, okay? This is where I keep all of my uh, resources. I keep them in my library. They're all free. So if you don't yet have a password to my library, you can get one for free. You just click on this link. Otherwise, you can click enter the library and it will take you in there. So um, it'll ask you for a password if you, you haven't been in there before. So this is my library and um, I put tonight's project right here at the top, but you don't have to, you know, like if you're watching this video a few months from now, it won't be at the top because I'll have had new projects to share. So I want to call your attention to your handbook. Okay. So a couple pages after your design space maps, you'll find a checklist of your first project. So this is what we're going to do right now. Everything is here and it tells you exactly where to find the file. It is number 277 in the library. 
So, you know, later on when it's no longer at the top, you can just search for number 277 and it'll find it. So, for example, here we are and you can always search any page, Command F, Control F, and you type in 277. Did I type? Yeah. And then there it is, right? The Cricut kickoff certificate is right there. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and download that. So we just click on it and it will download to our, can you see that? Yes. And it's kind of a mess. So let's go find, um, search by date added. It's right there at the top. Now, mine extracted for me automatically. Yours may not, right? So on the Mac, I have my, I have Google Chrome set to extract everything because this is a zip file that downloads. Um, if you're on, you know, I think you can do this on Windows too, but if you're not, if ever you download something and nothing happens, it just sits there in your downloads folder, you, on both Mac and Windows, you can right click on your, your file and choose, am I on the right one? <laughs> I'm telling you to do something, but it's not, this is not right. No. Um, I, I don't know. I guess I just double click it and it decompresses. On Windows, you right click it and choose extract or uncompress or decompress or something like that. I think it's extract on Windows. So it's important that you open up your zip file. Okay. Yeah. I actually have a whole series that talks about how to, you know, get files like this and download them. And it is at, um, sorry, one moment. I need a tissue. It's at jennifermaker.com slash SVGS. All right. Maybe someone chat can share that for me. It actually shows you how to do it on Mac, Windows, iPhone, iPad, Android, all of them. So if you are, this is a new thing to you. Most people will know how to do this, but if it's new, I explain how to do that. All right. So in here, let's just go ahead and open this up. You will see several files, and this is typical for all of my free files that I distribute. And I'm trying to just, it's actually um, it's gonna change the way that we see it. There we go. All right, so this file right here that says Jennifer Maker SVG, the SVG is the, always the file that you want. This is the one that matters. Um, I put the word, the name SVG right in my file name to help you identify it. Um, but that's the one you're looking for. If you are on a Windows computer and you don't see anything that says SVG, first of all, make sure you make your windows wider so you can see the full name, just like I'm doing right here. You see me fiddling with my windows. I'm making them bigger so I can see the full name. But it might be called Chrome HTML or Edge HTML. If you see that, that's the file that matters, okay? So we've got everything extracted. So let's go back to Cricut Design Space. And there it is. Okay, so now let's upload our SVG. And the SVG is a cut file so that I have designed for you. You'll find in many uh, cut files like this. Most of everything I do is like this. So we click on upload right here. Okay, not, not hiding anything. <laughs> and then we click on upload image and we click on browse and we go find that file that we downloaded. So it should be in your downloads folder called Cricut Kickoff Certificate Jennifer Maker. And you're looking for the one that says SVG in the file name. Uh, it may or may not say SVG image here. On my Mac it does, but again, it might say Edge HTML on Windows. And then you click open. And it appears for you right here um, on the side. And you can add this to... You can upload it to the cloud and Cricut Design Space and it will stay there until you don't want it there anymore. <laughs> you can, you can um, keep it there. All of my stuff is basically still there unless I told it I wanted to delete it. So you can give it tags, I rarely do, but you can see a preview here and you just click upload. And that goes into your uploaded images and they're all organized in reverse chronological order. So here's the one that we just uploaded. These other ones you see here are from other lessons today when I was teaching on other platforms. You can see all other recently uploaded images that I have here. So, but this is the one, the one that's on the far left in the upper corner is the one that's the most recent. You can also click here to see all of the, everything you've ever uploaded. Just view all right here. 
but we want this one and we've selected it. We've got this green box around it and we see a little icon of it right here and then we can click add to canvas. And I don't see it right now, do you? Um, I, we've been playing around so much with the canvas that I'm, it looks like I'm zoomed in to 300%. So not to worry. So typically if you click on it, it will go to it. Let's, there we go. And then I'm gonna zoom out cause that's way too big. So I just clicked on it on the layers panel to like zoom to it. And then here it is on my canvas. So whenever you upload an SVG set like this to Cricut Design Space, it will be grouped by default, right? So we can see here it's in a group and when I click and drag it, it moves all around. Um, and that's fine. This, if you want to resize it, this is a good time to resize it because it's all together. Whenever you resize something, you wanna keep everything together. That said, everything is sized properly right now so you don't need to resize it. So I, what I want you to do is ungroup it so that we can work with each layer independently. Okay, so now when I click on things, I can click on just this part or just this part, right? Let's undo that so it's still centered. So what we have here is a little certificate for you or a card or whatever you wanna use it for. Um, this is the part that we're going to put some words on. We're gonna draw it on with our pen. And this is the cover that says, you are a star. And it looks like this when we're all done. So super cute because you can use this just to give to somebody. It says you are a star and on the back it has um, your, so your little certificate for completing Cricut kickoff and it's going to be personalized for you. It's going to have your name there and we make all of this using just the, all Cricuts can do this, it's just the fine point blade and a piece, two pieces of cardstock and the pen and that's it. So most, you probably already have these things with your Cricut already. That's why I picked this design. All right, so to do this, we want to get some text on there, right? It's uh, cause we could go do this right now, but um, it's a little boring. So let me show you how to put text onto your card. So we're gonna click on text, just like we did before. It's gonna put that word text on our screen and it's already pre-selected. So we can start typing right now. Let me get out my keyboard. So I'm gonna type. Congratulations, two. And then I'm gonna press the return key on my keyboard so we go to the next line. And I'm gonna type my name. I want you to type your name. And then I'm gonna press return, and go to the next line. Uh, for completing, again, and then Cricut kickoff. I know things are overlapped right now and my, my, my head is covering them. Let's move them over here so you can see. There we go. So this is what it looks like. It, this is the, the default font, default size, all of that. So yours will probably look very similar. But this text is not gonna fit, right? It's way too big. <laughs> and also like our pen's not gonna to draw that either. So we need to modify this to look good on our certificate. So we want to first resize it, it's, it's too big. So again, we're gonna use a resize handle in any of our corners to make it smaller so it fits so I'm just gonna click and drag that in and let go and uh, click and hold, drag it over so it looks like it's a good fit. That looks good. And uh, the text is already aligned to center, but if I wanted to change that, I could change it right here to be left or right or whatever, you know, wrap on or off. We we manually wrapped it when we put the return key uh, keys in, but you can do auto wrapping if you want, uh, but we'll do centered. Okay, and of course we can center our whole thing with align by selecting everything right here. I'm going to align center horizontally. And now everything is perfectly centered on our card. All right, now this is fine, but we wanted to use our pen to draw this, right? If we were to like, you know, not change this, it would cut, not draw. So, because again, by default, everything is a cut. Everything is basic cut, that's the default. So we need to change it from basic cut to draw. So we go to our operation menu and right here, and we change it from basic cut to pen, or draw, pen under draw, right? So pen. Now when it does that, it changes to look like this. Let's zoom in on this so you can see it a little bit better. I'm gonna use my keyboard shortcut. And this time I'm gonna do command plus 
um, and Windows you can do Control plus. And so um, we get bubble letters. So the pen is going to outline around our font that we have here. So um, if you like that look, go for it. It's, it's good. But I don't want that font. I want it to look like it was actually drawn, you know, like this. Like this looks like a pen drew it, right? We want this. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So we need to change the font and we need to change the font style. So to change the font, you go to the font menu right here. So you select your text, that's important. And then you go to the font menu and you can select all sorts of fonts. There's so many fonts. So across the top here, um, by default, it shows you Cricut fonts, which by the way, not 700 fonts, but 900 fonts, <laughs> a lot of fonts. Um, so you can scroll these if you want, you could, but you can search them. You can filter them, all sorts of cool things. By the way, did you know that this menu can actually be um, unanchored from the top and you can click and drag it into another position while you're working? Isn't that cool? So you can move it over. So I'll keep it over here while we're working on it. So these are all the Cricut fonts. Notice all the Cricut access flags here. Um, these are all Cricut access fonts and we can filter things here to show free fonts. So I just clicked on filter. I'm going to click free and that will show us only free fonts, right? Those are only free fonts. Um, but what we want is a writing font. Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. I forgot. I'm telling you about the tabs at the top. So we're on Cricut fonts, but there's other tabs here. So the system tab shows you fonts that are installed on your computer. So this is all the fonts. I guess I have 311 fonts on my computer. So if you download um, free fonts from like defont.com and you install them, you'll need to restart Cricut Design Space, but then they will show up here. Um, so all sorts of fonts in here. You can bookmark fonts. So I can bookmark Adorn S. That's a nice font. And it will show up under bookmarked. So if you want, because there are so many fonts these days. So if you want to uh, just, you know, bookmark your favorite fonts. So use that bookmark feature and then you can just get to the fonts that you really, really like without wading through all of the fonts. Also note the recent tab right here. This shows you the fonts that you've recently used. So like the one that's currently on my canvas is Cricut Sans. Right, so if you know you used it recently, but you don't remember what it was, it'll show up here. All right, so those are the tabs across the top. You can search for anything here, search for languages. There's even cool like ways to like look for other kinds of fonts, right? It's like a brush font, right? Really pretty fonts, brush fonts. But what we want is a writing font. So let's, uh, take off brush because we want access to everything. Now writing fonts are really a Cricut specific font. Um, I have made a couple of fonts that are like writing fonts and they work the same way, but they're not true writing fonts, just so you know. So if you want a true writing font, you'll use a Cricut font. So you, what we do is we click on filters and we click on writing and it will show us all of the writing fonts that are, or all the fonts that have a writing style right? So Cricut Sans, which is free for everyone to use, but then there's all these other ones too. So if you have Cricut Access or you get the free trial, feel free to play around with one of these writing fonts, right? Um, for now, I'm going to stick with Cricut Sans because everybody can use that for free and accessibility is important for me. Okay, so I'm going to stick with it. So I'm just going to go ahead and close the font menu, but pretty cool, huh? Okay, so Here's our, we haven't changed the font at all. So what we need to do, because I said it was it had a writing font, but that's not a writing font, right? We need to change the style to actually select the writing font. Because right now, right here in the style menu, it says regular, but we need it to be writing. Okay, so I'm going to click writing and it changes, right? So now it changes to this single line font that will look awesome with our pen in our crickets. So this is what I want. This looks a little big. I'm going to make it a little smaller. Awesome. All right. So this is good to go. We can fiddle around with the letter spacing. We can bring everything closer together like this. The letter spacing right here. 
that's really really close together. Um, we can change the line spacing to be so that the lines are further apart, right? If we want to. Um, we can curve our text. You'll need to have just one line. You can't do it with the um, multiple lines. But if I were to say, uh, I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to bring it over here. And then I'm going to edit it and get rid of everything but congratulations. Yeah. And now I can curve. Okay. So if, by the way, you want to curve something but you can't, it usually means you accidentally put a return in there. So go check it. Okay. So now I can curve it and I can make this pretty cool text like this. And, you know, you could put it up here if you wanted to, right? If you want to, I don't want to. But you can definitely play with the curving feature and you can curve the other way too if you want like this, right? So super cool. I'll delete that though. And then you can also, um, the advanced menu will let you ungroup it. So you can break it all apart and fiddle with it. If it's like, you know, you just got to have it a certain way and like it's bugging you that the O is not close enough to the F or something, right? You can ungroup two letters like this. And then each one of these is um, individual now. See, you can see how now there's a layer for each letter. And then if we zoom in on this, let's get in nice and close. Now I could select this F and I could move it over like that. If you're like, you know, if, if it's really important to you, right? So you can do all sorts of, you have a lot of control over how things look. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to undo so that we can keep it all together. If you do that, it's um, important to attach. Um, otherwise, it'll be all jumbled up. Okay, so let's back up a little bit here. All right, so we have set our text and we have put it in a writing font style and we've set it to pen. Awesome. We can change our pen color here, by the way. I have it set for the default black fine point pen that comes in your Cricut, but you can use any color. You can use a marker. You can use your gel pen, whatever you want. You just, I mean, you don't even have to set it here. You just, but this helps you visualize it. Like for example, if I want to use a marker, actually let's switch it to the calligraphy. Let's get the nice big thick one and do that. This is what it would look like. So it's helpful to visualize it, right? To see it, because you're like, oh, that's really big. <laughs> Maybe that's not quite what I wanted, right? So that's the only reason. It doesn't, your Cricut won't know what, what pen you put in there. All right, but I want you to uh, call your attention to my signature down here. This is in the file. Um, this signature is basic cut. That's the default. So it's very important that you change this to pen too. So we'll go just selected right here. We're going to go to operation and choose pen, right? And so it should be this, we want it to be the same pen. So black fine point. Okay. So now we have our two writing layers are set to write, which we can see when we click on them, right? Right here. And there's the pen there and there's the pen. So we got it in both spots. Now we're, we're basically ready. Um, there's one more important thing to do, um, and that is to attach our writing to our card. Because if I was to click make it right now, so I'm going to go ahead and click make it right here so you can see what can happen. What will happen is that the Cricut doesn't know where you want your text to go. Now, you know because you were designing it on your card, but you never actually told Cricut that you wanted it to be there. So it's just sort of floating out here in the ether, unattached to anything. Um, here's your yellow card and here's your blue card, but there's your text. It's unattached. So if you see this, you want to go and click the cancel button and fix it. Okay. So to fix it, we attach it so that we tell our Cricut, we want these layers to be together on the mat. Let's go find them again. There they are. So we just select everything that we want to be attached. So I'm just going to drag a box around them. We can, of course, hold down the shift key and select from the layers panel if we want. But so we have our congratulations text block. We have our signature, which is right here. So we, I'm going to double click that and change that to the word signature there. So we know. And then we have our yellow card. OK, so if I hold on shift. I select all three of those and they're all selected on my canvas. And then I click attach. 
like this. And you'll see the word attach appear in your layers panel. And you'll see the three uh, layers that are attached nested under it. And this is exactly what we want to see. And this is the perfect time to save it. So let's go save it. Save button is right here. So let's click on this. And we're going to save this as Cricut Kickoff. And uh, by the way, you can save things into folders. There's folders here, they're called collections. Um, everybody gets uh, can create up to 10 collections. Cricut Access subscribers can create unlimited number of collections. I actually only have like nine, I think. So <laughs> even though I'm an Access subscriber, I haven't needed any more. I wouldn't say I'm the most organized person either. Like I should definitely be saving this to tutorials. There we go. <laughs> okay, so I've saved it. So always save your work, especially before you go to click make it, um, just in case something happens and you have a crash or whatever. All right, so we've saved our work. So let's go click make it. Now what we should see is our Cricut, um, sorry, we should see two mats. We should see the yellow mat, right, with our writing on it and it says pen and basic cut. And we should see our blue mat with just basic cut, right? This is exactly what we want. Now on this screen, we can change the load type. We can do it on a mat by mat basis. I want it to be on mat. And we can change the material size. 12 by 12 is what we want for both. Now you'll note that there's a little toggle here that says mirror. This is mostly for iron on vinyl, so we don't have to worry about that. If you're interested in iron on vinyl, I have lots of tutorials on that. Um, so everything looks good. Always double check your mats. If something doesn't look right, just click cancel and go back and fix it and then come back here. And I want to know also that you can move your project on your mat. So this is useful if um, your mat's getting a little old and you just want to cut it in a stickier part of the mat. That's one reason to do it. Another reason is if you're trying to save material and so you're positioning things in a particular way. There's a lot of different reasons that we might do that. You can um, even move them to other mats. You can hide them. You can rotate them right here. So you can do things in this prepare screen um, if it's useful to you. All right, so this all looks good. So once you're ready, click back on your first mat and then click continue. All right, so this brings you to the make screen. Now my maker three is already um, connected. We did that in lesson one, right? So I'm not going to cover that again, but go back and review lesson one if you have a problem with your Cricut not connecting right here. So now we need to set our base material. Uh, so these are these things that show up here. These are just some of the things that you can do. They're popular, the popular ones. You can switch to your favorites if you have any. And clearly I haven't favorited any materials, but you can if you want. If you have materials you use a lot, but popular is a good place to start. Um, so for this project, we're going to use cardstock. So medium cardstock right here is going to be your best friend for this project. So you can just click that. It doesn't matter if you're using, let's go back so you can see that. You can always click back on that by clicking here. Um, it says 80 pound, but I will also use medium cardstock setting for 65 pounds, right? It's, this is my go-to uh, setting for cardstock. If you don't see medium cardstock here, you can click on browse all materials. If you don't see anything here and it just says, you know, it's it's already selected for you, that, that I'm talking to my Cricut Explorer Air 2 people right now, remember, on your Cricut Explorer Air 2, there is a dial up here. Remember how I told you that you want to set it to custom? Make sure your smart dial is set to custom. All the other ones are fine. All the other Cricuts are just, they don't have dials. Only the Cricut Explorer Air 2 has a dial, so make sure it's on custom. All right, so we're selecting medium cardstock and uh, you just basically match up your material to your um, material setting. That's all that is. And then under pressure, I like to choose more. I think it gives me a better cut in general. That's my just general policy. Um, machines will vary, of course, but more pressure I find just helps me get cleaner cuts. And then remember material settings is good because if all of the layers, all of the mats are the same material, and mine are, then 
it will allow me to, um, it'll save it. So it'll apply the same material to all of my mats. So if you're gonna do that, you might wanna click that. Okay, so now it tells us what to do. Load the black pen into clamp A. So let's switch over so you can see the maker. So I've got it back here. There we go. So I've already put some paper on my mat. Um, we did that in lesson one, but as a little refresher, here is my mat and I put a piece of cardstock on it and I use my brayer to make sure it's really well adhered, okay? So it's all on there. Remember, you put your material starting in the upper left corner, right? So it's stuck on there really well. So I'm going to load my mat in. Um, the load button is flashing. It loads in. We need to put our pen in. So here is the black fine point pen. This is the pen that comes with the Joy, the Explore Air, and the original maker. The Maker 3 and the Explore 3 don't have pens, but you can buy pens. Right? Any pen you have that will fit is fine. Okay, so open up the clamp, take off the cap, put in the pen. My hand, my hand, I usually hold the bottom and I snap it into place like that. Close the clamp, put the cap back on the pen. Make sure the fine point blade is in there, which it is and it's good to go. So, and the, the button is flashing. So I'm gonna go ahead and press um, the flashing button to begin. Design Space tells us what to do. And if you look here at um, Cricut Design Space, you'll see it's give, it'll, it'll give you messages as you go along. It's finalizing the design right now, and then it will start writing it. And it'll give you a percentage as you go along, just like this. So that, that, it's not really running that fast in my experience. Oh, and I forgot to do something. We're gonna fix this right now. <laughs> Cause I can see, I think, did I? Oh, maybe I'm okay. What I forgot to do, so I'm gonna tell you now since I forgot so that you don't have to make the mistake. When you are first putting your pen into your Cricut, uh, before you put it in, do a little test of it to make sure that the ink is flowing and it's primed and ready to go. I guess mine's fine. I thought it was, I thought it was messed up at first. So I usually just um, put a little right here in the corner. I just scribble a little bit. Um, if it's not flowing right away, just keep going. And usually it will. Remember if you store your pens tip down like this or on the side like this, they're more likely to be ready to go than if you store them like this, right? This is the Joy pen. Don't forget your pens. The Joy uses its own pens and blades. The explorers and makers are all interchangeable. The, the pens are, at least. <laughs> all right, so it is writing right now. You see, can't quite see it, but it's there. I'll see if I can zoom in a little bit for you. You can kind of see it there behind the rollers, <laughs> but it is, it is writing and it looks like everything is going good. And we can see if you go over to Cricut Design Space, you can see it says it's finished drawing, but really what it's done is it's finished sending the information to your Cricut to tell it what to do so that you're not confused by that. So that's like, it's like a loading thing, right? It's sent all the data over now and your Cricut Maker or Explore or Joy, because this works for all of them, just has to complete it. And it's maybe three quarters of the way through right now. So even though I'm demonstrating this on the Cricut Maker 3, this process is identical for the original Maker, the Explore Air 2, Ex Explore you know, Air, the original Maker, all, Explore 3, all of them. The Cricut Joy is just a tiny bit different. It has just one clamp. So I'm gonna move my camera over there. Just one clamp, so we have to put the pen in and then we put in the fine point blade, right? But because the maker has two clamps, we don't have to do that. It can do the writing and the cutting without having to switch the tools, which I love. <laughs> so it did the writing already, and now it's just doing the cutting. It's putting in some stars right now. 
and now it's dry it's cutting out the certificate there we go all right so when it's done the let's zoom out a little bit so you can see here the load button will flash and you just the cricket joy was a little close there sorry um and here it is you see i'll show you on the overhead too so there it is it looks beautiful don't you think so when you're done with your project you flip it over right to get it off your mat you flip it over and you peel your mat away from your cardstock right this is how we get our material off our mat without harming it ripping it tearing it curling it right so you you peel it away like this and it, it sometimes it just kind of comes off on its own the act of curling this, the mat like this releases the, uh, the material from the adhesive. So there we go. And it is all done. And this is what it looks like when it's finished. Isn't that awesome? Okay, now let's do our other layer. Um, let's take off our material. I still do the same thing to remove that rest because this is good paper. We can use this, this is a scrap. Save onto this and, and, and um, use it again. And then to get off our little stars, we use our scraper. So a big one or little one doesn't matter. You can use them as confetti. Aren't they cute? See, we'll just leave them right there. Okay, let's put on a piece of blue now. Like this. And use our brayer to get it well adhered to our mat. And now we're going to do the other side of our certificate. So there we go, and we're gonna put it right in. And Cricut Design Space does tell us this. So we go back here, um, it's, it's, well, I guess it doesn't, I guess it does. It's on the blue mat now, see? So we have done the um, yellow mat, and there's a check mark next to it, right? Now the blue mat is highlighted, there's no check mark, so we know that this is the one to do next. If you're ever unsure of which color to put on your mat this is how just check your screen your make screen to see okay so let's load let's move our cricket out of the way remember you want to have space in front of and behind your cricket uh, at least 10 inches load that in now we are done with our pen because this layer doesn't have any pen so when it is finished loading we'll take the pen out so we don't forget I've done that before. Um, you'll note that it loaded the, mach the machine mat all the way in and out. It does that to make sure you have enough material. So let's go ahead and unclamp this and pull this up and out. Put the cap back on your pen <laughs> and close your clamp. And I'm just going to put it tip down in my um, tray back here. Okay, so it's ready to go. The flashing button is telling us to press it and it's going to cut it. This, this side goes a little faster. If you have any issues cutting your cardstock, um, some things to remember are that your, your mat needs to be pretty sticky. Um, if you're having issues with that, use your brayer. This is amazing for getting your cardstock to stick well. Um, and make sure that your blade is clean. I taught you how to clean your blade yesterday in lesson two. And then make sure you're using a good quality cardstock, right? If your cardstock has been around for a while or it's a mystery cardstock, it might not be the best, right? So um, I talked all about cardstock yesterday too, if you want to review that. So you, these, those are the three main things I think about. Uh, sticky mat, clean blade, good cardstock. In that order too. When I have to troubleshoot my own problems, of which I have many. <laughs> Don't ever feel like you're the only one that has problems, ever. <laughs> if you've been with me today and in all of our lessons, you will know that you are not the only one that has problems. We have had all sorts of um, issues today. This lesson has gone really well, and I'm not going to say knock on wood because I'm not a superstitious person, so don't say that. But so far, things have gone really well in this lesson. All right, so Cricut Design Space is telling us that it sent all of its data over and it's still cutting, right? So your Cricut Design Space will always communicate with you what's going on if you're ever unsure. All right, 
like we're almost done. Yep, it's just doing the outline around it now. Excellent. All right, so now we can, the unload button is flashing, so we unload it. And this is what it looks like on this camera here. You are a star, because you are. And this is what it looks like on the overhead. I know that's kind of, I had to dim my lights. Is that gonna focus for us? There we go. I had to dim my lights up here because I was showing my iPad and Android tablet and the glare was pretty bad, so. All right, so remember we flip our material, our mat over face down onto our surface and we peel our mat away. You can We can take off both at the same time if they both wanna come up, that's fine. Just be careful, you know, there's some delicate bits in this. There we go, just like this. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. There we go. And then you'll be left with this, which is super cute. You're welcome to use it if you want to. Um, but you can also just get it off your mat with a scraper. It is very cute though, isn't it? So let's take all that off, just like that, really easy. And remember to put your um, liner back onto your mat. Mine is right down here. Although, we're gonna save this because I have that thing I wanted to do at the end. Things are going well, so I think we could attempt it. All right, what a mess, my goodness. So, here is our finished certificate. Um, this is the front, the back, or whatever. So to put it together, it's so super easy. I'm sure you don't need me to tell you, but just in case, you flip this part over so it's, uh, we see the back side, and we take this and we just insert the corners right into it, just like this. If for any reason yours is not fitting like mine, that usually means that you, when you were playing, you resized it. This, the yellow card, you know, your certificate card should be smaller than your frame. There we go. And fit in there just like this. Let's get one of these out here. Should fit in there just like this. And on the other side, it looks like this. Isn't that cute? So you are a star for sticking with me all this time for Cricut Kickoff and doing this. So the, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take a photo of your awesome card, please. I've already seen some. I went looking for them specifically right before today's class. I want you to take a photo of, I don't care how you do it. If you wanna like put it on your Cricut, you wanna hold it up and take a picture of your face. I would love to see your face. Show me your certificates. Doing this, doing this really can help. I have showed you a lot of different things in this one project. If you can do this project, you can do a lot of stuff, okay? And it's pretty easy. You can totally do this. So take a picture of it and put it over in Cricut Crafters and Makers. Here's the link to it at the bottom of the screen, jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. This is my, our Facebook group with over half a million Cricut Crafters in it. It's an awesome place, very encouraging. I won't be the only one to tell you a great job. Other Others will too, or they'll at least give you a like, okay? So it's always good to have validation that you're doing a good job. All right, so now I said if things went well, we would attempt uh, a little feat that I only try once a year because I don't usually have all the crickets out. And that is to try cutting all of them at once with from my Mac. So remember how I showed you that you can open up multiple windows, right? So with one installation of Cricut Design Space, you can operate multiple Cricuts, which is pretty cool. So we're gonna try it. So starting with the Maker 3, I'm gonna get them all queued up and ready to go. It could fail, everybody, but it might work too. All right, so there's the Maker 3. Let's put its pen in, of course, because these are all the certificates with the pens. And let's see where the joy will be about here, okay? So when that finishes, we'll put the pen in. All right, so that's the Maker 3. Do the original Maker. Put another piece of paper on this map. Think we can do it? Think we can do all five? I don't know. We've had lots of issues today, we might not. <laughs> all right, so we open up this one. And I'm gonna use the same file for all of them. So this one goes in here just like this. And it's already, I got them all queued up, so they're ready to go. 
I'll show you the windows when we when we press go. And the Explore 3, let's open that one up. You see that okay? My drink's in the way. Okay, so here is the Explore 3. Oh, that one needs to be cute, it looks like. One moment. I'll show you. Let's go over to the web, um, not the web, the Cricut Design Space. And I'm going to make this window a little bit smaller so we can see. There we go. So they're actually down here. I got them queued up. So here is the Joy. You see it says Joy. And we'll do, we'll do that one in a minute. Here's the Maker. We got that one loaded. That one is should be ready to go. Press go. This one. Oh, right. I have to put that one in. Okay. We're not making this one. We can close that. All right, this one here is the Explore Air, and this is the Explore 3. Okay, press continue. There's my Explore. I just gotta go back and do all of this. I must have like, when I was getting everything ready. Okay, there it is, it's ready to go. Okay, so let's load that one in. So that one's loaded. And our Cricut Explore Air 3. We gotta get pens and everything, of course. We open up this. All right, let's put our pens in. I'm gonna test them. I'm gonna test this one's good. And if they aren't, if they don't draw right at the, you know, initially, why is that not fitting? I don't know why that's, there we go. Okay, if they don't draw, just keep doing it and then the ink will come out, just by the way. All right, let's put this one in. Scribble with this one. Put that one in. There we go. Put the cap on. I have lost many caps. That's why I always say that. <laughs> uh, scribble with this one. And I know I'm usually whenever I have my stands out, people ask where I got them. We made these. Greg made them for me. So they're just little stands, nice and stable. And I use them, you know, when I'm teaching. And then the Cricut Joy has a smaller mat, right? Let's put this away so we can see everything. There we go. Let's get rid of my mess here. Okay, smaller mat, right? But I have a piece of paper ready to go for that one too. All right, just use my brayer and we'll want a little more space here. Let's move this over right here. There we go. And this one I already set, so I should be able to load it, but it's not loading. Oh wait, I think it was. No, I think I just fell. Let's go check. A lot of windows open, right? So we gotta go find the joy now. There's the joy. Ah, yes, I haven't told it what it's going to use yet. There we go. Okay, and then of course on this one, we need to put in our pen because the pen on this one is, uh, different size, right? The Cricut Joy has different size pens. Now what I'm doing is just for fun. Very few people I think in the world need to operate five crickets at once, but some of you might want to do more than one at a time, right? And I want you to see that it's possible. All right, so let's put in our mat. Okay, so we have, oh, let's put our little certificate up here again. You think we can do it? Gina says, here we go. <laughs> I did it last year. So if it fails, we could watch last year's video, right? <laughs> All right. So uh, the, I will need to press go on everything. The joy, for those of you who have the joy, you press go in the in design space. So that will be the go button for this. But everything else will be me pushing the buttons. So... Are you ready to try this? I've actually felt a little nervous. I actually don't get nervous anymore doing live videos, but like it could be a disaster. Who knows what will happen, right? <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and press go on the Cricut Joy, and then I'll press uh, the flashing button. Everything's flashing, right? Flashing button. Flashing, flashing, flashing. See, isn't it amazing? It actually is really cool. All right, so let's do it. 
I want to try to get them at about roughly the same time. That's the idea. All right, so I'm pressing go on the joy. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Is everything going? It's all working, you guys. Everything is working. Is that amazing or what? It's all from the Mac. The one, one installation of Cricut Design Space is operating all five. You know, I don't have a special account or anything like that. Anyone can do this if you're using Cricut Design Space for your Mac or your Windows computer. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> uh, I think it's cool. Like seriously, how, how often would we do this? <laughs> it's fun, then if you look, you'll see Cricut Designs. I know it's kind of loud in here now, isn't it? Can you still hear me? It's five machines going at once. It's not as bad as you might think, but you can see the progress on them. Here is the Joy. Here is the Explore 3. Here's the Explore. Um, here is the Maker, and here is the Maker 3. Um, or maybe not this one. Maybe it's on another one. I don't know where it went. <laughs> I have a lot of windows now. Look at them all. All right. Now, which one's going to finish first? Any guesses? Uh, Jill says, doesn't your Cricut need to be connected to your laptop? I'm using my computer. You can't see it. I have some laptops sitting here just so that you know that you can use a laptop just so that no one is confused, but this is my old Mac. My daughter tried to take off my vinyl. She wasn't very successful, I will note. My old, or Greg's old, PC um, laptop. But I'm actually using a, a desktop right now. You just can't see it because it is what's live streaming all of this to you. So they all have the same thing. <laughs> I see someone commenting on that, right? I didn't I didn't press go all at exactly the same time, but it was close. The joy was first, then one of these two, and one of these two. The Explore 3 is done. So the Explore 3 finished first. Uh, the Maker 3 is still going. I don't know why. These two are still going too. Although it might be cutting. For this one is finished. This one's still going. Now it's done. So our, our Cricut 3s were faster. Our Cricut Joy is not done. We have to swap out the uh, blade, right? This isn't really a speed test. <laughs> it's, just a, it's just a for fun thing. There we go. I have done speed tests before, but I would have done it more scientifically than this, you know, where we are actually pressing them at the exact same time. Also, keep in mind that they are all going to the same computer and some have extension cords and some don't. An extension cord will slow things down just a bit. So this side, um, actually I think they all do have extension cords now that I think about it, but they're going into different ports in my computer. So, because, you know, that's a lot of computers. Look, so everything is done, including the joy. So was that cool or what? <laughs> so that was just for fun. Um, when I did this last year, I remember someone was like, well, why would I want to do that? You probably wouldn't want to do that. But since I get them all out and I hooked them up, I figure why not? And I also, it's cool to know how powerful Cricut Design Space was. It was able to communicate with five different machines over both Bluetooth and USB, different connections, all at the same time, right? So it was sending that data all at the same time. And I think that Cricut Design Space sometimes gets a bad rap, honestly. And I actually think it's pretty amazing. That is 100% honest truth. Sure, it's got bugs from time to time, but what software doesn't? I have been playing with software for so long I, I cannot think of anything that doesn't have problems. All right, so we did it. Um, what's next? Okay, so that was a lot of information. I know, I totally get that. Um, and all my crickets swinging at once. 
Um, if you want to learn more about Cricut Design Space for desktop, I have something that might help you. I actually just opened enrollment for my popular Cricut Design Space course. It's called Cricut College Design to Shine. It's only open for about a week. Registration closes on Saturday, January 7th. I won't reopen it again until summer. We open it only twice a year so that we can maintain an awesome learning environment. If you want to learn about it, go to jennifermaker.com slash design to shine. Um, I will show you briefly what it looks like. I'm not selling you on this, but I want you to know that it's open because I get a lot of people asking me, when are you gonna open it? So let me uh, pop over to my website and I will show you. So here we are and you just go to jennifermaker.com slash design to shine. If I can spell it right. <laughs> um, and this is the page. This page will tell you everything so much better than I could tell you. You can just click here to enroll, right? But this page talks about what it is, how it works, why I'm teaching it, blah, 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 all that stuff. <laughs> what people think about it. <laughs> Uh, there's a bonus if you sign up um, now this weekend or before the end of the weekend because it's not quite the weekend yet, but you know, before Monday, um, all sorts of cool things. So we learn by doing. We make awesome projects. It's all the crickets and all the platforms. And we do things like pop-up cards and iron-on shirts and signs and frames and you make your own flowers, custom flowers faux leather, your own custom shadow boxes, layered vinyl, mandalas, and print and cut stickers. This page explains everything about it. Some of my cool student stories and their projects um, and all the bonuses that come with it. So if you're interested, be sure you enroll before it closes on the January 7th, okay? And if you're watching this video after it's closed, uh, there should be a uh, waiting list box. Then you can just put your name and email address in there and I'll email you when it opens again. Because I know that this video will be watched um, in, the, in the future, right? After registration has closed for Design to Shine. We typically open it twice a year. And, we, and again, we do that so that we, um, well, I mean, it's not like a live class where I'm sitting here teaching you and with all the mistakes. It is on-demand videos, so they're all edited and easy to follow but we still like to bring people in in groups so that we can make sure that you have an awesome learning environment. So it's very important to me. Now, if you have questions about Cricut Design Space, about anything that I showed you here tonight, because I know this is rather a lot of stuff, I tried to be as complete as I could, so that means I went pretty fast. Just leave your question below this video or come ask in our Cricut Crafters group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. I put the link right here on the screen. Um, you can get help and guidance from hundreds of thousands, no, over half a million Cricut Crafters just like you. It's an awesome group. Now, if you want to learn how to use Design Space on the iPhone or the iPad, um, or Android because they're quite different. I have lessons on those devices as well. Get links to those classes at cricutkickoff.com. And if you want to learn more about Cricut Design Space, I invite you to just hang out on my blog. I have hundreds of free Cricut tutorials and projects. Um, I also have a helpful guide called the Cricut Coach Playbook. It has dozens of cheat sheets for Cricut Design Space. Uh, this is very popular. It's been used by nearly 400,000 Cricut owners at the time I'm recording this video. Soon it'll be half a million. It's kind of awesome. Um, and they tell me they find it very helpful. I keep it up to date. It's been updated recently. If you want to learn more about the Cricut Coach Playbook and get a free page, just go to cricutcoach.com. And I also offer Cricut classes, and workshops, more courses besides Design to Shine. And you'll find all of those over at makeracademy.com. Come visit and... My, <laughs> it's falling. We'll just skip it up here. So come visit and find something awesome to make with me. Thank you so much for joining me for your Cricut Kickoff. I hope this has helped get you on the path to success and you'll be making more wonderful, awesome things with your cutting machine. And if you do, please share photos in my group because I truly love to see what you make. It makes me feel like I'm making a difference in the world when you get to make what you love. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love. All right. I have lots of questions from you and now I'm going to take uh, your questions.